Whoa! What? Now, last year on your self-portraits, that would have been pretty amazing, right? And you know how to draw a face pretty well. So if I were you, I would expand on this. I would just go ahead and draw an entire face and use that for the mouth. Very nice. I want to give a couple shout outs too, um, because Ivelisse, Peyton, Umar, Sakir, um, are a few examples of people who came to my art class every day over spring break. I loved having you. It was so much fun. Um, but I am so, so happy to see all of your faces here right now. I'm just going to in the room and I can see that Nadia and Zoe are showing me some amazing artwork. Um, and I would love to see everybody's and I'm getting chats about it too. So how about this? How about we set aside some time at the end of class for a little bit of show and tell, okay? All right, great job, Rasheen. So, um, again, so, so happy to see you. I've missed you guys so much. Now, let's talk about what we're doing today. Who can remind me? What have we been working on the past couple of weeks? I know it's kind of been a long time since I've seen you. So what have we been working on before break? We're gonna go to Aisha. Um, we, we have been working on um, superheroes. Yes, excellent job, Aisha. Great memory. So what did we decide about our superheroes? What are the things that we've done so far on our own superheroes? Um, tracking to see who's raising their physical hand who can tell me what we've done so far to create our own superheroes. Oh, I hope so. Oh, Alex. Hey, Alex. Hey, um, we, we've been, we created our logos. We created our logos and we created our superhero costumes. Amazing job, Alex. Yeah, we created our logos and our costumes. So what is, what's the purpose of having a logo? If you're a superhero, if you're an artist, if you're a company, why have a symbol that represents you? Why do that? What's the point? David? The point is that when you need to have a label so when someone asks people like where a store is, they can tell you the logo. So you, when you go around, you can see the logo and you know that's the store that you're going to. That's exactly right. To be able to be easily identifiable, people can find you right away. Um, and people know who you are if you're wearing a logo. So we also decided to talk about our powers. I'm gonna um, spotlight Josiah for a second. Um, where did he go? Where did he go? I just had him. Josiah, where are you? Can you start talking? There you go. Hey buddy, so I remember when we were talking about our superheroes, we as a class decided that your superpower would be able to bring laughter and joy to people who are sad, right? Which is kind of what you already do. So, bring laughter and joy to people who are sad. That's kind of what you already do. And that's your superpower, being really funny and making the world happy. So who remembers what was their superpower for their superhero? Coming over to me, Shiel. Hey, buddy. I remember my superhero power was, was making people, making people happy and always, and always um, cheering them up. Yeah, well, you know what? You do that in real life too, buddy. Um, all right, who else can remember their superhero and the powers they had? Ivelisse. My superhero was Super Sweet Girl, and my powers were to cheer people, to cheer everyone up who, were, who was sad. Oh, how very accurate um, to who you are as a person. And I love that our super how, our superpowers are, um, you know, to help people. Hey, Brandon Crumble. What about your superhero? My superhero name was Spark, and it was to shoot lightning bolts out of his hands to fight lightning? crime. <laughs> lightning fighting crime. That is pretty cool, Brandon. Thank you for sharing that. Um. All right. So. To refresh your memory, uh, we so Zoe, I really do want to see your art, but like I said, we're going to have a little bit of a share out at the end of class, okay? 
So for now, just stay focused on the assignment at hand and we can do a little bit of sharing out um, at the end of class. JL, I definitely see your name. And Amelia, you can use any coloring technique that you want to, but mostly for the class today, we're just gonna be drawing, all right? Uh, coloring is for if we have time at the end or if you wanna get started filling it in for next week. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen with you because today we're gonna be talking about something called a storyboard. Can you say storyboard? I wanna hear Amelia say storyboard. Storyboard. Way to go. All right, so I'm gonna show you what I mean by that, okay? Let's take a look. Let's make a storyboard. Take a look at the picture that's on the screen. What comes to mind when you see this picture? Someone who's right, oh, Matthew. Hey, Matthew. What comes to, to my mind when I see this is that, like, I think I, what comes to my mind is like a comic book because it sort of looks like a comic book with all the pictures and then the words on the bottom. And okay, so excellent job, excellent um, observation skills, Matthew, as usual. So um, Matthew is saying that it kind of looks like a comic book because he sees pictures and a couple words. Um, anybody else have thoughts on what they see here? Make sure to raise your physical hand so I can find you. Any other thoughts on the picture that you see here? Scanning the room for hands. Nafis. Hey, Nafis. Um, what, what this reminds me of is like the backstory of how the superhero became a superhero. Oh, so what do you mean by story? What do you mean by the word story? Like, like, like the backstory of how that superhero became a superhero. For example, like how Flash got struck by lightning and then be and then like some chemicals spilled on him and then he be and then he got like he was super fast. Okay, so a story or backstory being the the thing or the text that explains why a superhero is who they are. Yeah. Excellent job, Nafis. And I hope you're making art, buddy, um, because I would love to see it. Um, just a quick comment, guys. I love your art so much and being able to teach you um is something that i value more than anything else and i miss so much being able to watch you work and get so much better at these skills and grow as artists and i'm really fortunate that we have the opportunity to kind of be in the room together but i really can't wait until we're back in the classroom making art together again all right, so what we've said so far is that a storyboard has pictures and it kind of looks like it's explaining something. So let me show you another slide. What about this one? This one's a little different. Take a good look at it and tell me what you think is going on here. What do you think is going on here? Uh, Maymor. Hey, Maymor. My dragon student. What I think is going on is like, I don't know, I don't really know how to explain it, but, but it just, it looks like, like, it looks like a sad, like, it looks like a sad story. Cause like on the, on the sixth picture, I see that, I see that the, the boy or the girl it has like tears on their eyes. Yeah. So you feel like because of the images, the story must be a sad one. Yeah. Pretty good observation. Um, what else, despite the mood of this storyboard? Um, so Josiah, no, I did not draw that. Um, so let's just say um, that you're just looking at this and despite it, you know, the mood of it, despite it looking sad. Talk to me about technically, what do you see here as an artist? Scanning for hands. Um, so guys, make sure when you raise your hand, you raise your physical hand. Hey, Felix. Oh, where'd you go? All right, here we go. What do you see, Felix? I see like the, the right there, I see like the like a girl holding 
holding like a paper and like she's like cr like crying like crying for some reason okay um so yes we definitely see that there is a character we definitely see that they are sad but let me try to guide you in a different direction here um are there words so good addition january but i'm seeing you guys say no there are not words so what I'm trying to get to here is that there's multiple different storyboards that you can create. You can add words or you could leave it just pictures, but either way, it needs to tell a story, okay? Now you guys are gonna be creating a storyboard based on your own personal superhero. That's why we spend so much time creating the logo. And so if anybody's drawing on this screen right now, that's just unacceptable. And I'll have to put you in the waiting room and I don't want that. So please do not do that. Um, you're going to be making a storyboard based on the artist that you created, okay? Um, don't worry about that right now, JL. So let's take a look here. This is the logo that I made um, from our first superhero class, right? My superhero is artsy. They create giant works of art really, really quickly, and they can very quickly bring art supplies to people who need it, okay? And then this is the drawing of my costume. Um, and that's, don't worry, Sarah, you don't need to worry about it. That's the drawing of my costume. That's gonna help me get these supplies to people. So in this section, what is a storyboard? I want someone to tell me, based on the images that we just saw, what a storyboard is and what you think you'll be needing to do today. Alex? I think a storyboard is, something is basically like an origin story about your superhero and we're and we're gonna need to like tell like in in our origin story or in our storyboard how our character became a superhero okay so um one sec alex so i'm just gonna pause right there because there's a difference between a storyboard and an origin story. An origin story is how someone got the powers to begin with. Storyboard is just um, laying out or plotting out in about six different frames what's happening in a story, okay? So I'm gonna stick to what Alex said and I'm gonna write pictures that tell a story. I'm also gonna add Six pictures total. Okay. Um, who else can tell me what we should be adding to our storyboard? Looking for physical hands to be raised. What else can we add to our storyboard? Maggie. Something else we can add to our storyboard. If we want, we can add words at the bottom of our pictures. Excellent job words at the bottom of your pictures. Now that is optional. If you wanna do all of the explaining with just pictures, that's fine too. Words at the bottom and parentheses, optional. Fatimata, did you wanna to add to that? Fatimata? Um, yeah. What's up? Um. Well, I was gonna say, I was gonna say that we could add words, but someone already like took it. Oh, totally got you. Um, oh, right, so uh, Jordan Mercedes, I sure missed that face. Hope you turn on that camera sometime soon so I can see that you're here. Um, all right, so words at the bottom, optional. Now, what is something that every story has? Think about um, all of your reading and writing lessons and all the stories you've written in class. What do your stories have? Looking for hands raised. And I know you all are so, so bright, so I might just want to pick on somebody randomly because it's probably going to be um, correct. So Josiah, six, if you want to do more than six, that's fine, but there should be at least six. And Aisha, if you want to do a speech bubble, Instead of writing words at the bottom, that's fine too. 
that might be a little more like a comic book than a storyboard because remember a storyboard is just a way to map out your ideas it's not like a finished comic book so who can tell me what's in a story when you make a story what is in it where am i right oh dariani what's in a story dariani in a story there there are most likely characters okay and action what do you mean by action by saying like in in a photo or in a picture there are different um moves different and not moves? just uh-huh and not just like one okay very good so each picture is a little different so Maggie just commented something um, and Caitlin did too. So Caitlin, can you take yourself off of mute, please? Caitlin, can you take yourself off of mute? Is that possible? No, you can't, okay. Um, then Maggie, can you take yourself off of mute, please, and tell the class what you just chatted to me? There you go, Maggie. What did you write to me in the chat? Um, in in every story, we always the story always um well most of the time it has to has to have a problem. You are absolutely right. That's exactly what I was looking for. And that's what Caitlin um, chatted to me as well. So a problem and then what comes after a problem? And then after a problem, we can have a solution or a resolution. Um, are you sure you're in third grade and not an actual teacher disguised as my scholar? A solution or a resolution? My goodness, you guys are so smart. So looking at this list, let's start thinking about a story that we can have for our own superheroes. Before we do, or you can be thinking while I show you how to do this, okay? I want you guys, and I love so much that I can see your faces and that you're tracking the screen. So I'm gonna share my screen with you and we are going to, where is it? I want you to be able to see my camera there we go. So notice how I have a piece of paper and I'm holding it the hamburger way, okay? Um, I want it the wide way. Now, I'm gonna break it up into six squares. by going like this. I will draw a line right through the middle. And then, okay, so whoever is writing on this, delete that immediately because you're going to confuse people. And I do not want to give you warnings and email home. That would be ridiculous. So now what I'm going to do is, in, I've got it in two halves here, top and bottom. Now I need one, two, three boxes up top, one, two, three boxes on the bottom. And to do that, I can just draw a straight line down over here and a straight line down over here. I want everybody to make this and then hold it up when you're done. Rasheen should be fine with this because she has a ruler. You don't need a ruler though. Everybody just draw these six boxes and hold it up. Dariani is there. Maggie's there. Umar is there. So guys, the reason that I'm asking you to show it to me is because I need to see that you're working today, okay? So uh, just go ahead and hold it up when you're done because if I'm seeing that nobody is holding it up, it, I feel like I'm gonna take more time waiting for you to get there. It does look like tic-tac-toe, David. Um, so instead of spending that time, oh, there you are, Jordan, hi. So in, instead of spending that time waiting for you to finish, we could just be moving on. So hold it up when you're done and then I'll know we're ready. Just like Owen and Caitlin. 
and Christian, Amelia. Whoa, and David, Mishael, Aisha, Madison, Ariani, Josiah, Fatimata, Maymor, Sarah, Abdullah, and Alex. Wow, that page. Okay, so now, just like Maggie and Caitlin said, we need a problem. So if I'm making my superhero and my superhero's name is Artsy and she brings art supplies to people who need them, then give me an example of how there could be a problem to write a story about. Who can tell me? Someone that hasn't raised their hand today and hasn't contributed today. I would really like to hear as many voices as possible. Hey, Nathaniel. What do you think, Nathaniel? What would be a good example? What would be a good example is that you ran out of art supplies and you can't give it to people. Okay. What would be the reason that people don't have art supplies? The reason that people won't have art supplies is that you have that all people need art supplies, but you can't, but you can't give you can't give the art supplies all at once, so you have to give it one by one. Hmm, okay, I'm trying to flesh out this idea a little bit more um, to really make a story about it. Peyton, what are your thoughts? Uh, I, I, I think that, I think that the problem, the, the, the problem should, should, should be, should be that, should be that some people that, that like some people are are spending are spending their money wrong so so you don't have enough money to give everyone art supplies oh so the people can't afford the art supplies even though they want to make art okay so that's a pretty good idea so what i'm going to do now is go to my first frame in my storyboard and Again, this is not a finalized comic book. This is specifically just a quick step to kind of explain the story. You are going to be making a comic book eventually. So it's important that, you know, this storyboard is clear. So here we have a bunch of people, okay? And they're all upset because they're saying, we can't afford our art supplies. And they're saying, help. And they're saying, we need art, all right? So that's my first frame, people in need. They need something, they're calling out for help. What can come next? Oh, um, Miriam suggested that they can't leave their house, so they can't buy art supplies. That's good. I'm gonna add that. I'm gonna write, we can't leave the house. We can't leave. So what's a good example of something that could come next? Um, Amelia. A good example, a good example that could come next is that is that when that you would be that you would be come that you saw them and then you'll come and give them art supplies. That's good. Here's what I'm thinking though. I don't want this story to just be three frames. Like, oh, they need it. Here I have it. Now it's done. I wanna fill six frames with stuff that's going on. So how about this next one could just be one piece of what you said. How about this next one could be someone shines my logo in the air and I see that someone needs help. Kind of like Batman. Would that be okay? Yeah. All right, honey, thanks for that contribution. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll put 
Now, when it's Batman, it's like this shining light from the ground. And then it's like a big circle. Um, and of course, it's the Batman logo. But I'm going to add my logo, which is a paintbrush and a pencil with the letter A and a border. And to show that it's in the sky, I'm just going to draw some clouds. And then to show that it's hovering above a city where I live, I can just put um, some buildings on the ground using the overlapping technique that I taught you guys at the beginning of the year, which seems like a million years ago, right? Seems like it was so long ago, but really it was this year you learned overlapping. All right. So excellent job so far um, to those who have contributed. So here's what we have. People can't leave our house. We can't afford the supplies. Help, we need art. Someone puts the signal up into the air. Now what can come next? It, you um come and um get art supplies from the stores and give it to all the people. Okay, so again, I am wow! Look at that great wave painting behind you. You Actually, know, we go ahead. Yeah, my mom bought that. That's yesterday. so beautiful, and it reminds me a lot of when you were in first grade and you were learning about movement and art, and we learned that curvy lines show movement. You can see them all over that wave. That's really cool, buddy. You're so lucky to live in such an artsy place. So I'm going to take your ideas and I'm just going to like kind of chop it up and make it a little smaller so that I fill six frames. Now, what you were saying is I see that they need help and I go help them and I bring them supplies. How about this next one is just that I can see the logo in the sky. Is that okay? All right. Namor, I haven't downloaded Flip It Up yet, but I'm still thinking about it. So, here's how I can show that I just saw my logo in the sky. I'll quickly sketch out a window um, from the outside, and I'll add some bricks here to show that it's the outside of the building and not the inside. Okay. And then I will be inside looking out. Um, and I don't have my costume on yet, right? Because I'm just seeing that they need help. All right. So, so, so far, people need help. They put the symbol in the sky, and then I see it. So, what can come next? Uh, Madison. I actually want to add on for I actually want to add on from your third photo, and you can write and you can write down in a bubble speech that you can say, "Oh my God, they need my help." Oh, such a good idea. Way to really flesh out my character. All right, so. They need help. Awesome. Thanks, Madison. All right, so what can come next? David. Put your costume on. Got to put that costume on or else how are they going to get the supplies? Way to go, David. So what I can do now is maybe show a screen where I go to my closet and here we'll just have like coats and clothes and things that are hanging up on hangers to show like this is my closet um and lots of closets have like big boxes at the top so i'll add that and then maybe like some shoes um really just kind of sketch out 
um, cause I'm not really putting a lot of fine detail into this drawing. I'm just sketching out what I want it to look like when I do add detail. So I'll go ahead and add coat hangers, clothes, and then right in the middle will be my superhero costume. I'm not gonna um, sketch out all of the elements of this costume. I'm just going to insinuate that it is because I'm gonna add the cape and my logo. Okay, so far, we need help. There's my logo, they need help. Gotta find my costume, what comes next? Oh, Nafisa secret lab, that's a cool idea. Um, Looking for hands of the people who, Luna. Um, you could probably um, go um, outside of your window. Um, you could um, go outside of your window, flying, flying through the air, and then dropping art supplies on, on, the, on the people. That is an excellent idea. Um, I especially love the thought of like kind of flying through the air. So what I'll do now, is I'll draw those people again. And by draw, I mean sketch because people are not circles with triangles for bodies, but this is just a quick sketch of what I can do. Okay. Um, and then I'll have myself with my cape flying through the air and then dropping things like pencils, paper, paint brushes, paint palettes, scissors, glue, markers, all sorts of things for them to do art with. And then how can I end this story? Fatumata adding that there could be a villain is a fantastic idea. Guys, if you want to put a villain in your story and maybe your villain is COVID, that would be a great idea too, because a lot of you said for your superpower, you want to heal people of being sick. But if you want COVID to be the villain and you to be the hero, that's an awesome idea. Fatumata, so smart. But what can I do for my very last square? Maybe somebody who hasn't said a word, somebody who's so quiet and shy and wants to resolve this story for us. All right, Peyton. He looks just so excited to share. So what do you got, buddy? What do you got? Uh, I think that for like the last scene, you should you should have like let like the like the people you should have like a sketch where the people are shouting, thank you, artsy or something. And then uh -huh. and then you and then you should and then you should have like your own catchphrase, like like Superman, like up, up and away. Ooh, what do you think my catchphrase should be? What about you deserve to make art? That works? All right, I'll think about it. Um, excellent job, Peyton. So I'll have that the people are saying, yay, thank you. Um, thank you. Um, and then I can tell them do that typical superhero pose where they've got their hands on their hips. They're kind of flying. Remember when in second grade, when we talked about how to make a person look like they're moving, something that can really show a lot of movement is having their clothes or hair kind of flowing in the wind. So to show them I'm flying, I'll take my cape and I'll have it like flowing in the wind. And I'll say, you deserve to make art. Or maybe I can change it eventually to like making art makes a difference or something that's um, really nice like that. 
Um, I'll put the city in the background because that's where we live, overlapping, reference to skills you learned early in this year. All right. So I don't know who wrote that. And I would like to figure out who is writing on the screen um, because it's a little hurtful. Um, wow, you guys have such good ideas. I'm going to stop the screen share because it's just a little hurtful that you guys would just write all over it. Um, but you guys have such great ideas uh, for catchphrases. So now what I'm going to need you to do is put the great ideas into your own work. Okay. So um, here's what you're going to do. I'm going to stop talking. For the next few minutes, I want you to draw those six squares on your paper and then um, start to fill out your storyboard. Okay? Please do this now. Leon, hold it up. What? Awesome job, Leon. I just love that you're making art outside of class, outside of school. I just love it. 150, I thought this class left at 155. I'm pretty sure it's 155, guys. While you're working, um, Jordan, gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. It is 155. Thanks, Rasheen. So listen, guys, while you're working, it's very, very important that you know we are using these storyboards the next time we have art class. So next Friday, same time, same place, you need to have your storyboard with you, okay? So Nafis, I wanna see it. Yeah, hold it up, Nafis. Oh, cool. Is that your superhero? I can't wait to see the story that comes out of that character. So as you're drawing, quick reminder, you need these storyboards for next class, okay? So make sure you bring them. I know Nadia is gonna bring it cause she's looking at me and she's nodding and she's like, yup, I'll be there. So once you have a couple frames of your storyboard drawn, why don't you hold it up so that I can see what you've done so far. And because we didn't have really enough time um, for sharing out. Oh, JL is already done. Oh, wow. Carolyn, already on her fourth frame. Excellent. Gonna head over to Diego. <gasps> already finished? Wait, does that say to be continued? <gasps> A cliffhanger. Oh, wow. We are stepping up. Rasheen, what? Rasheen actually has eight frames and it looks like she's adding more. My goodness, you guys are really, really stepping it up. Coming over to January. Wow, January, hold that very, very still. Can you hold it very still, please? Because I'm gonna try and take a picture of it. Thank you, January. Um, if there is anybody who made their story about COVID-19, uh, can you please raise your hand right now? I'm just curious. David, can, you, can we see it? Huh? I, I can't, you're on mute. There we go. Can we see it, David? I'm still working on the drawings. Yeah, just show me what you have so far. The people and the virus is going to be on the next frame. Oh, okay. Good to know. Thank you, David. Madison, did you say that yours was also about COVID? Uh, let's see. 
Okay, excellent. Wow. Awesome. I'm going to head on over to look for Jayal because I know she wants me to see it. And Sarah is telling me that the villain in his story is darkness. Wow. Super deep. So many things we can do with that. Wow, JL, get out of town. Stay right there because I'm taking a picture of this. Don't move a muscle. Beautiful. And Zoe Stoops, I know you wanted to share something. Can you pull it up now? Oh, sorry. Did I say? Braden, excellent, excellent. Wow, these look great, you guys. A quick reminder in our last couple of minutes, um, I need you to bring this work to class next week, okay? Zoe Stanley. Let me see, let me see, hold on, hold it up. Whoa. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight frames. You guys are going above and beyond. These are amazing. I wish, I really wish that I could just spend an entire day looking at the things that you have made. Um, so because I can't, uh, sorry. Uh, because I can't see what you've made so far, what I need you to do is email me on Jupiter if you want me to see any art that you've made over the week, okay? Maybe Moore is going to do his comic book on Flip a Clip. Really great idea. All right, guys. Um, Mr. James or Ms. Berger, do you happen to remember what time they're supposed to be back in class? 2.25. I will be looking for you. So they're on break and then at 225 they go back? Correct. All right, you guys, I love you so much and I miss you and your geniuses. And if you have any questions or if you need something or if you just want to talk, just email me on Jupiter and we'll set something up, okay? I love you and I miss you. Not enough. See you guys again soon. Bye. <laughs>